what I hate about Democrats. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a little few caveats here. And I'm going to start off with the statement of Tommy Lee Jones in Men in Black. A person is smart. People are stupid. Okay? Democrat individuals, individuals who say they're Democrat and, and follow that type of, of thing, are not necessarily stupid, mean, vicious, racist, whatever type of people. You'll find a lot of them in there, okay, but they're not necessarily like that, okay? Republicans, they're not totally evil, but there's some idiots in there, okay? Additionally, both political parties have a lot of corruption. They have a lot of corruption. And believe it or not, it is one of the main reasons I like Trump is because Trump is the outsider. He's the one who looks at him and goes, you're all corrupt. You're all corrupt. I know you're corrupt because I I use the system and I know it's fixed. And it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things. And it's why they are going after him so bad, because he represents their downfall. There is a reason why only the Supreme Court has lifetime to limits written into the Constitution because you're not supposed to be in Congress forever okay if you took back the time and you went all the way back and you brought them all forward they would probably go okay we gotta put term limits into Congress and the executive branch and we've gotta do these things this is this is not good um, but for the Supreme Court you need individuals that are going to slow everything down. They're going to have the older wise views of the old past and it and it keeps that thing. It's the whole thing about the way the Founding Fathers built the bureaucracy is to keep things moving forward but at a slow pace so that people don't get overrun by progress. Going too fast you can have things get out of control. Alright, so in order to talk about why I don't like Democrats, we have to go through my family history. And I mean really go through it. Because see, here's the thing. I've mentioned in other videos I'm a veteran. I'm a seventh generation veteran. Okay? Way back when, in 1773, John <laughs> Barclay, um, he came to America and he had his family and he had a son in 1773. He had a he had a, um, a son Francis, I think it was, and he had to make a choice. He's like, we need something better. I am tired of the tyranny of the government. I am tired of being operated as if I'm a slave, even if I'm not somebody who's bought and sold as a slave. We're all being just torn down and I want to be part of this new system so as long as we have this I will put forth as long as we fight against slavery and against oppression I will I will be this and it was taken almost as a solemn family oath if you would um, Francis uh, went off and uh, he fought in the Barbary Wars to stop the pirates from creating slaves out of Americans. Uh, that was a little tiff. Um, and then uh, John had another son, Joseph. Joseph went off to the Ohio Michigan War and, and protected the, the, the homes of them. That was a very minor little thing that happened, a little minor skirmish. But he had a son, Charles, and Charles fought in the Civil War. Now, the predominant part of my family starts up, you know, at the, you know, the northeast tip of America and then comes over towards Ohio. And he, he had moved to Ohio. And when he was 20-ish, uh, 22 something or like, I think that was what it was, he went off to fight the Democrats. And the Democrats, when, when, when they made the deal in the Constitution to start the country it, and, and things like that, it was, okay, we're going to get rid of slavery and oppression. And the Democrats didn't like that. They wanted to hold on to it. 
and it was the hope, you know, it was the enemy, my enemy is my friend. We're going to have to work with these guys. We have to be able to work with them. We're going to tolerate it for now, but we're going to try to work with them and get rid of it. Um, and that went down to uh, throughout the years, and they fought against it. But then when Charles was 20, he went to fight in the war against slavery, against the Democrats. Um, and that was a huge thing for him. He, he fought against it. I still have his knife. I still have his fife. He was actually one of the, the, the people who would go into battle carrying the flag and whistle the tune without a gun. And he would do that part to lead the charge and to keep the, the troops regulated. Um, which, by the way, is, is a part that many people mix up about the Second Amendment. And then they sit there and they go, well, it's a well-regulated militia. Um, yeah, he was a well-regulated militia. He was part of the Ohio um, Irregulars, is what they called him. Um, and what it was is he was an able-bodied person who was well-regulated. He was fit, equipped with his own gun, his own everything, and he could go to war to the aid of the state to help them. A well-regulated militia. In other words, the town people come together and go, we are going to protect this, and we're going to pick up our guns, and we are already fit, and we're ready to go, and we're ready to fight. When we're in the military and we talk about getting your men regulated, we're talking about get men ready. Okay, you have to be trained, you have to be everything in the world. You've got to be fit. That's what well regulated is in terms of the military. You talk about regulations and law, that's different. Okay. Um, but he fought against slavery and it was it was a win. We we kicked the Democrats' ass. Um, and there's some reconciliation parts that we tried to do after World War One with the Democrats to to try to bring things back in. Um, but, uh, Charles had a son, his name was Porter, um, and he was in the Spanish-American War and World War I, and that was a fight against Napoleon, uh, who wanted to take France and bring it back to a monarchy and, and go back to being kings, and it's like, it doesn't matter how altruistic you talk about being a king, you're going back to having, you know, a per, you know, a dictatorship and it's, it's the government's in charge and it's not by the people. So, you know, that was, that, that was seen as oppressive and it flows into eventually slavery or, or indentured servitude or whatever you want to call it. Um, Porter had a son, his name was Lewis Porter Barclay. And Lewis Porter Barclay was my grandfather, and he fought in World War II. Uh, World War II, as we know, was also a fight against slavery. It was against socialist slavery because, and socialism follows the Democrat Party around a lot, and the reason they like it is because it always flows into elitists and slaves. It's it's their standard go-to model of, of how to control people is through socialism. You have the elites, you have the lower class, and it, it was just like in the South. Imagine what life was like in the South. You had a slave. Who were the slaves? The slaves, forget race for a second, because originally black people, white people, every type of people was people until we started traversing the entire world. Um, and then it became very racist, which is another thing that's inherent to um, the Democrat Party, um, which is why it's it's kind of funny. They sit there and go, this country was built on racism. Well, no, actually, this country was built in spite of racism. We fought against it. Well, it's systemic. Well, it kind of is systemic in the Democrat Party. Everything the Democrat Party does is fight for slavery. That's what they want to do. And it's evolved over time so that it doesn't have to be black people or, or whoever. They just need their little slave workforce. They need the people who they appease to give them all their, 
their their votes and their everything, and then you have the elites. Uh, during the Civil War, the elites were the crop owners, and they they had the slaves, and they paid heavy taxes to provide social programs to the lowly poor white people who would then pay, you know, or who would who would vote for the people in Washington, the Democrats in Washington, because it was, oh, you're giving me free stuff, so I keep you in power. And the, the slavers, they would pay all their money into, into those people, so those were part of the elites, and the other part of the elites were the slave owners. They paid heavy taxes, but, I mean, think about it in today's money. If you make $50 billion a year, and you have to pay $5 billion in taxes, to, to make sure every all these other people feel happy about getting free stuff and they also have the ability to say well I'm at least I'm not a slave at least I'm not scum it was very big so you you had you know that kind of, of thing going on um, and in World War two the funny thing is is that uh, we had Democrat presidents like Wilson he brought uh, KKK they founded the KKK and it's so amazing to me that that people don't know that the KKK was founded by the Democrats. Really? You don't know that? that racism is in their skin. It's like bred into their DNA. They want that. Um, FDR. Oh, my God. FDR is like their, their equivalent of, of what all the MAGA think of Trump. Okay? The Democrats loved FDR. You know why? <laughs> because he was a socialist who who pandered out socialism, and he was bringing, he was very close to bringing the whole idea of Nazi Germany to America. The only reason, FDR was he wanted to be Hitler without the psychosis. Hitler was psychotic. Hitler was nuts. He had all kinds of different ulterior motives. FDR, he had concentration camps for the Japanese. He had his own stuff. The, 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 every, they thank him for all the social programs. The social programs, you can thank veterans for that. After World War I, we wanted to make peace with the South and said, look, we cannot punish a child for the sins of the father. We have all these orphanages. So veterans started pooling their money and, and, and taking care of the orphanages. And they had a little bit of a spat. There was a, a, a real idiot in the House for, for Republicans. Again, they're not always great people. Um, and FDR took and came out to make the New Deal with veterans. Hey, will you share some of your veteran benefit money so that we can create some programs to help the poor? Give them a hand up. Veterans love that idea. We love giving back. We love going out and helping. That's our thing. But we don't like coming home to see starving children. So, yeah. All of that is, is very well documented in, in the books of the time, in, in the legal documents. It's all in there, okay? That FDR, you know, he campaigned on a libertarian type view. He's got really great quotes for libertarians. But as soon as we gave him the power in 34, to, to do all the work to do it, to do the New Deal, he took the entire VA budget and walked off with it to do his little social, his socialism social program. Now, veterans had to force him to put it back. Um, he did. He, they forced him to put it back over his veto. He then walks into the American Legion conference and goes, how dare you have a right to these benefits above everyone else? And it's like, okay, how dare us, just because we wore a uniform, have a right to benefit? How dare us sign a contract with you that says we're going to sacrifice everything. We're going to take less than minimum wage pay. We're going to take all of these things. And the only thing that we have on our side is a contingency clause that says if we can't come back and participate in the economy and if we die. And if these things happen, you have to make sure that we don't die in the streets, that we have benefits that provide the basic level of care, and, and that we you're not just going to abandon us. How dare us have a contract that says we're going to give up everything to protect you, but you're not going to leave us to die and, and have a right over that? How dare you have a right 
to your health care plan. Why can't everybody else use your health plan up so that you don't have anything left? How dare you have a right? I, I pay for my health care. I, I do this. I, how dare I have a right to what I, I made a contract with my boss? How dare you have a right to your own paycheck above everybody else? Because I'm the person who worked and signed the contract and did. It's socialism. It's by. <laughs> as soon as he did that, he walks back into the damn White House and walked off with the budget again. We force him to put it back. Okay, we we force him to put it back. We get the bill gets up on his desk, and he's the first president in history to walk a veto back to Congress to say, "Screw you! I'm stealing the money." <laughs> Yeah, the man was a socialist pig. He wanted to be Hitler, and we stopped him. And it all came out to the public, and it all came out to fruition that, it, that all of that was horrible. And he lost the he lost the the last election. And right after that, we said, "Okay, no more of this. We're putting term limits on presidents. We're going to do that." Well, guess what, people? We need term limits on Congress. And again, there's only one there's the only the one branch that's allowed to stay for life. And that's because we need them to be nice and slow. Um, so FDR was horrible, and and they had to fall and fight against him. Um, my dad was was in during Vietnam. It was really funny because he was in, and they sent him a draft notification, and he responded to it. He laughs about this when when he would tell me, is he would sit there and say, "Yeah, I wrote him back a letter." And uh, I said, well, you know, if you really, if you want me to join you, you're going to have to talk to my commanding officer, <laughs> you know, because it's like, dude, I'm already in, <laughs> I'm, I'm already in. And he stayed in forever. And then uh, I was in and, and I was there for the Gulf War in Bosnia and the Oklahoma City bombing. And I was there to provide rescue work. Um, and that's what my background is as far as, as, as family history is we have fought against slavery and for our entire seven generations we have fought against Democrats trying to enslave the people that's that's all they do they still operate in the exact same way we have a constitutional republic right so and we have electoral college and, and, and that. So why is it that they're so fixated on the popular vote? We don't go by the popular vote. If a president gets elected without the popular vote, that means that they got elected without the elitists taking over. That's an accomplishment. That's not a bad thing. It's an accomplishment. The popular vote is, is, is what they rely on. And it's why they're very popular with kids, because kids, especially the young, they're, they're all about you go to school and it's, oh, I'm the prom king and queen. And what I say is popular is popular. And the outcast little nerds and all the, you know, the whatever kids, oh, they're horrible. And we can outcast them because that's what they do. They ostracize and outcast the people who do not follow their, their rules, their little way of doing things. And then as long as you're with them, you're good. As long as you're part of the elites, you're good. And we ostracize and make them do our homework. We make them do all the work. We make them do stuff. And this is the way they work. This is why you can find videos of Biden sitting there and saying, oh, marriage is between a man and woman. And now he's like, woman of the year is a trans is a transvestite. You know, it's like, you know, they follow the trend. And that's all this whole thing is right now is, is, is the trend of being a transvestite, but pretending to be transgender. And that's what they do. So if the trend is pretending to have a mental illness and abusing them or pretending to be autistic or pretending to be a quadriplegic, that's what they would do. And that's what they would support. Okay. So they're going to sit there and do that because it's all about gaining the popularity. It's the popularity and it's the numbers that they count on to get themselves to do stuff. Um, and they're they're not above wanting to stop it. They have not. And, and it's so funny because every once in a while it comes out, it does. They hate America. 
They do. They do not like capitalism. They do not like America. They don't like an electric college. They don't like having it the way it is. They want their elitism. They want that tyrannical type situation and they want to be the elitists. You know, and that's what they're doing now. I mean, it, when you sit there and you look at all the kids who have horrible educations, okay, the, the people with the degrees in gender studies and whatever, what have they done? They've appeased the population with this, and those are the non-workers. They're the ones who are going to receive all of the social program stuff, where all the money comes from the elites, who slave work all the others, <laughs> who are getting slave work, but give the social credits to all these other people, and then they can get, you know, all their bribes to forward whatever they need to do. They can operate their elitism in a capitalist environment. They can. They can. They don't like it, but they can, and they will. They, but they don't like America. They do not like a voting system where the system is designed to protect the minority. And a minority is not just, oh, it's the blacks by color, it's race. It's not just race-based. It's ideology-based. It protects the minority of an ideology. Okay? If, you, if there were only, you know, a couple million people who believed in, you know, family first or whatever, Think about how many um, uh, Amish people there are. The American system protects the Amish. They protect them. They are a minority. They are not the mass majority of people out there who believe in God. They're not the mass majority of Americans. They are not, but it protects them. They are a minority in that way. And that is the way the system is designed. It's designed to protect the little guy, okay? so that the big crowd of mean, nasty people can't come down on all the little nerds or all the other weird kids or all the other whatevers and let them make fun of them and do all that stuff. But that doesn't stop them from this constant, I've got to get my buddies together and get all the people to think the same together and do this. And I mean, if you look at America today, I can see how they're driving slavery back, how they're trying to do it. They're destroying the family. That is their goal. Their, their goal is to destroy family units because family is the absolute foundation of America. And when you have strong families throughout, you can't crush us. Okay? You cannot do it because when you fight for your family, you will fight tooth and nail. I would die. Let me tell you this right now. Family comes first, and I've said this one before, and it's probably going to offend a bunch of people. You, you want to sit there, and 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 God comes down and tries to tell me I got to kill my kid, and does the whole, what's it thing with the burning bush and stuff. You have to kill your kid. God better chain my ass to the biggest mountain and hope he can get across the universe faster than I can drag a planet. And the only thing that's going to end up happening is he would die tired. Yeah, I'd kill God family comes first okay get as pissed as you want family comes first so um there's a lot more to it and you can make a lot of analogies with the way the population is growing we have a lot less children now that are coming in so we're going to lose a lot of those workers that we need to carry forward we can't advance when you population goes like this it starts getting no narrower but where do you bring your slaves in? Oh, well, you bring in all those illegal aliens, you put them to work, and guess what? You have a new slave force. And who are the elitists? All the kids with degrees that can't work and can't get a job. Oh, we're going to give them social programs. And who are the ones who are going to be the elites? The rich people. And the, the, the people in Congress. So the politicians. And it's going to be back to the way it was. So when I have an issue with Democrats, it's because they've been operating on the same plan, on the same thing every day since the beginning of the country. They want their slavery. They want their racism. That's why they made it popular again to talk about racism. We were crushing it. It was dying. Nobody, nobody cared what color you were. Nobody cared about anything 
But next thing you know, everybody's having a fit. Oh, it's racist. It's massages. It's this. Cast you into little groups. You have the jocks. You have the 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 D and D kids. You have the this kids, the those kids, the these kids. Separate them all out. Then we just tell them that we have this in common. Stick with us, and we can ostracize those ones. We're gonna push them out. We're gonna push out. We're the best. Oh, it's good to do this thing. It's good to do this. You're cool. This makes you cool. Think of Adam Sandler. It, all the adults pee their pants. That's all the Democrats are, is, is follow the popular and use that to ostracize the little guy. So yeah, I hate the Democrat Party for more than just its corruption. I don't like the Republicans because of their corruption and there's other stuff that's in there. But, you know, the, the, the thing about Democrats is it's about bigotry, slavery, lying, socialism. Those are the things. And they're killers, every single one of them. So, yeah, I tend not to follow that group. I tend to hate it. But individually, I'm married one. She's awesome. Of course, she's super moderate. She believes in rights of guns and things like that, but thinks that there should be controls. We can have conversations and debates. You know, if you can't have a conversation, then you're if you sit there and you say you hate America, then yeah. As far as I'm concerned, you are the evil one. Because the non-evil ones are the ones who want to work together. The ones who want to talk. Alright. It's been a long. I'm going to cut this off. Have fun.